Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 573. Osteoporosis. Why do we look for new drugs when old hormones are much better? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. So... I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin. I deal with women and osteoporosis every day and have for the last 30 plus years. And I can tell you that osteoporosis is a big risk for women nowadays, and it is something that you should prevent if you can take the medication or exercise or take vitamins or all of the above, which is really what it takes to get good bones. Osteoporosis is a new... um, type of diagnosis. When I was in medical school, we didn't even talk about osteoporosis. We did have women who unfortunately broke hips and they were immobilized and that usually led to, at that time, pneumonia and death. So that it was there, but it wasn't an epidemic in uh, aging women as it is now. I think the reason that that was the case was that when I was in medical school, it was the late 70s. And in the 60s and the 70s, women were given estrogen from the time that they became menopausal throughout their life. And sometime in the 80s and 90s, they stopped getting estrogen because they found in um, the OBGYN community found that women were getting uterine cancer because of just taking estrogen. We now know that an easy fix for that is to take estrogen and natural progesterone, and that prevents uterine cancer. We didn't know that then. Because of this finding, um, the government and the um, OBGYN community, the internal medicine community, the uh, every other type of primary care community decided that women should not get estrogen anymore. And that was a big decision and an overreaction to this problem when we could have just added progesterone at that time and still had women on estrogen. This villainized estrogen made women afraid of it because of uterine cancer, which is fairly rare when people are taking estrogen, even if it's uh, unopposed, meaning just estrogen without progesterone. But in those days, that was it. Nobody took estrogen anymore. They suffered with hot flashes, they had, um, they had breaks of their forearm. Usually the first break that you'll have is if you're a, an aging female, you'll fall and break your forearm. That's the first break usually that you'll have, and then others will follow. What should happen, and there was just an article recently about osteo, uh, excuse me, about uh, orthopedic surgeons who are looking at patients who have broken bones, who are menopausal who probably have thin bones, and they are not talking to them about osteoporosis. They're just fixing the bone or trying to fix it, sending the patient home, and then waiting for the next break to happen. This is something that orthopedic surgeons should be talking about and should refer patients for treatment for osteoporosis. It is something that will get worse over time. After menopause, women lose 1% of their bone mass per year. And if you think about that, your bone mass is shrinking. That 1% gets to be a higher amount of your uh, bone that you have left. It is really significant by the time you're in your 70s and 80s. And this is why we have to do something about it. Now, the very best treatment for osteoporosis has always been natural estrogen, natural testosterone, basically bioidentical, any kind of replacement, estrogen and testosterone, uh, for, for women. The reason women have thinner bones is because we have one-tenth the testosterone of men. 
Men are born with 10 times as much testosterone as we are, and their bones are much thicker, much heavier, and they have their testosterone throughout their lifetime. Yes, it goes down after the age of 55, but it never disappears. For women, we have testosterone and estradiol basically from the time that we're teenagers until we hit menopause, then we're 50. And what if we live another 35 years? We don't have estrogen. We don't have testosterone. Our bones start dissolving a whole lot faster. And since we didn't have as much testosterone, we start off with thinner bones than men have. So our bones are already thinner than they are unless a man takes um, corticosteroids for asthma his whole life or if he has um, malnutrition. In general, men are always going to have good bones even by the time they're 80. Women are often fragile and have very thin bones by the time they're in their late 60s or 70s. So back in, um, back in the 1970s when we started seeing women who had been taken off testosterone, excuse me, estrogen, we realized that something needed to be done and we needed a test to see basically how much bone was left and how much, and to be able to take that test and see how fast the bone was, re, was dissolving. So we developed a density, a densitometer, a bone density measurer, so that you could lie down with a very low dose of radiation and get a picture and be told how thin your bones are compared to a 29-year-old female. That's how I like to measure the diseases of aging. I like to compare people to young, healthy people who have either good bones or good hormones or just good metabolisms. Because comparing us to somebody else who is old and untreated and not well isn't really much of a measure uh, of how healthy a patient is. So they did it right. They developed these machines. You can have a very low exposure to x-ray. You could actually find out what your bone density number was, how much lower you were than you should be, and then you could see how treatment improved your bone density over time. Well, we thought this was great, but interestingly enough, right at the time that the bone density machine came out, we also came out with a drug called Fosamax, which is called a bisphosphonate. It's a treatment for osteoporosis. I don't think that this is an accident. I think the drug and the machine had been um, developed at the same time so that they'd come out together. And this would um, legitimize both the disease and looking for the disease progression as well as looking for improvement on a certain drug. Well, bisphosphonates um, multiplied. Several different drug companies did uh, develop different bisphosphonates, but they all did the same thing. Over time, we believed that bisphosphonates thickened the bone and made the bone less likely to break. If you were traumatized, if you were in an auto accident, if you fell down the stairs, after taking these drugs and seeing that your bone density on the x-ray machine got better, you should have had stronger bones and you should have not broken them. We're now finding that this is not the case. Bone density machines look for the density of the uh, cortical bone, the bone on the outside. It's kind of like a, a circular uh, can with the bone marrow in, in, inside. Well, the bisphosphonates, bisphosphonates make this look a lot thicker. However, it's not stronger. So it's still fragile bone and women still break bones even after they've been taking these drugs for years. Why we did this, I don't know. It's another uh, mystery of the drug companies and uh, drugs that they actually develop to replace something that is cheaper, longer lasting, and less risky. But, you know, we have to learn through our mistakes. Hopefully we will. But estrogen and progesterone, if you have a uterus, and estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone are the best bone builders. So if you have osteoporosis in your family, if you have thin bones that you know about, if you've had many breaks, you should be evaluated 
for osteoporosis, get your bone density number, and then be placed on hormones to build your bones. Now, it's not just hormones, but we also add vitamin D is, is helpful to build bone, and calcium is helpful as well. And I'm sure you didn't know this because it wasn't long ago that I learned that bone is dynamic. What that means is your bones are always growing and breaking down. They're not growing longer, but they're building bone, thickness of bone, and breaking down every single day. So you need to build at least as fast as you break down. If you don't build as fast, that's how we get osteoporosis. We may have great bones when we're young, but as our hormones drop and we get older, then our bones are dissolving faster than we are making them. But estrogen and testosterone reverse that. They make the bones grow, actually get thicker, faster than they dissolve, even for people who are over menopause. This is the function of estrogen and testosterone, and together they are a much better bone builder than any drug that a pharmaceutical company has come, come up with in the, in ever for bones. So when I talk to patients who can take estrogen, they get to have the double, double dose. They get both hormones. Their bones can come back to normal faster than if we just give them one or the other. Now, some patients who've had uh, estrogen positive breast cancer are not, um, are not safe or are advised not to take estrogen. So we just give them testosterone and the minerals that they need to build bone. This works very well. Testosterone is an excellent bone builder. And in general, we don't have to um, rely on some other medication to build bone. Let me give you an example. Um, when I was in my 40s, I um, was at a conference and we were talking about osteoporosis, and I was feeling kind of um, immune. I said, I, you know, I was talking to an expert in osteoporosis right next to me, and she was blonde, blue-eyed, very thin, very light skin, and I was like, oh, yeah, I have dark skin, dark hair. I must have thick bones because, you know, that's, the, that's usually the prototype of people with heavier bones, thicker bones, is darker skin and dark hair and eyes. She looked at me and she started laughing and she goes, what's your mother look like? What's your father look like? Do, do you have anybody with like light skin, thin bones, that kind of thing? And I, then I thought about it and my mother was just as light as uh, this expert was sitting next to me. And I said, okay, well, yeah, I may have that, but I'm sure I've got the bones of my dad because I look like him. And she said, get a bone density. Oh my God, I got a bone density and I was 42, and I had osteopenia, almost osteoporosis. Then I thought back. I'd had, I'd had endometriosis. I had been treated with Lupron, which puts you into a false menopause over and over again. So I'd already lost my estrogen, lost my testosterone, and thinned my bones out before I was 42. So then I thought, okay, so this is, this is not good, but I didn't want to take this phosphonates because I... Um, studied the, sci the physiology of how they worked, and it didn't make sense to me. And if something doesn't make sense physiologically, then you have to wonder how it really works. And I should be able to tell that by reading and talking to people. So I didn't take bisphosphonates. What I did do was I started working out with weights. I took more vitamin D and more calcium, and it turns out my bones didn't get much thicker doing that. However, I had already started losing testosterone. I had already had symptoms of low testosterone. My estrogen was very low because I was very thin at the time. And I basically wasn't giving my body the hormones it needed. So when I had my uterus removed and ovaries, I then went on estrogen and testosterone pellets. And I then was trained to treat patients with this. So when I went on it, I did a bone density first. St I still had a little bit worse osteopenia uh, slash osteoporosis. And then I retested in two years after starting pellets, vitamin D, calcium, magnesium, exercise, doing everything. And my bones were normal in two years. Now, that's shockingly 
effective, and that's much better than any of the bisphosphonates do. Now, I can tell you now that I've been taking these for almost 20 years, that my bones are just fine. I, I do not have osteoporosis, and it's not because I have dark skin and dark hair and dark eyes. It's because I have replaced my estrogen and my testosterone, and that is significant in terms of my longevity. It is very significant in terms of keeping me out of a nursing home and not having to depend on my daughter. Uh, thank goodness, and I'm sure she's thanking goodness too, uh, that I won't have to depend on her to take care of me. But I will tell you the, the bad side of the story is that not everyone knows this. Many doctors don't know this and haven't had the time to delve into it to see that these drugs don't do what they say they're supposed to do. And there's a lot of drugs like that, which is sad. But one of the, um, one of the experiences I had at this same time as I was in my 40s, my mother was in her early 90s. And she lit, was really healthy, exuberant, but she had very thin bones. She refused to take hormones. She refused to take anything. She took some vitamin D, not enough, and she took some calcium and magnesium, but not enough. It turns out that in basically her life ended because her back was so thin, it collapsed just like an accordion, just collapsed down on itself which created so much pain that she literally couldn't live and we could and no doctors could do anything about it. So her bones were that thin and she didn't prevent anything no matter what I had said to try to help her. She didn't take any preventive measures. She didn't exercise, she didn't lift weights, she didn't I mean she exercised by walking but she didn't lift weights. But she literally died years before she should have because her bones are so thin. You rarely hear about somebody dying from osteoporosis, but there was nothing else wrong with her. That was the only thing that was wrong with her, and that was a real shame. And it was very painful, and I don't recommend it as any choice of any uh, mode of uh, ending life. So I have two very personal experiences and many experiences with my patients who have been told they're not gonna get better bones and they can, ju they can just um, take bisphosphonates or they're going to get better bones if they take it, but not if they take hormones. They've been misinformed. And that's really sad because this is the best basic way to take uh, something, hormones or a treatment, to treat your bones and make them thicker. One last note. I do have a group of friends and um, patients who believe that no medication is necessary. No hormones are necessary. The only thing they need is vitamin D and calcium. Well, I can tell you that that just doesn't work. Vitamin D and calcium for your bones is like if you had a potted plant and you put water in it, that's the vitamin D and calcium, and then you stuck it in a closet in the dark and it didn't get anything from the sun. It didn't get any, any sun's rays or energy to make, to photosynthesize what what plants need. I'm not much of a botanist, but to keep the plant alive. So you can water it, you can have great dirt, but if you don't have sunshine, you're not, you're not getting a plant that's going to stay alive. And that's the same thing with bone. Bone requires hormones to actually take the calcium out of the blood and put it in the bone. They, it needs vitamin C to cross-link these, um, kind of, it's kind of like putting struts in a house cross-link the uh, calcium portion, it also needs vitamin D to strengthen that part of the bone. So it's a multifaceted approach. It does require hormone replacement of some kind. If you can't take estrogen, you can take testosterone. There is no contraindication of that in women. And men in general don't need it, but they can take testosterone as well to help thicken their bones. The drugs that I believe are the worst for this is, are the um, bisphosphonates. But the teriparatides, it sounds kind of like a turtle of some kind, teriparatide is a parathyroid hormone which does help build bone. It's very expensive, uh, has several different side effects, and if you can take estrogen and testosterone, then you're saving money and you're saving side effects. So those are the common treatments. So my advice is, 
have your estrogen and testosterone. And if you need progesterone because you have a uterus, replace, replace that too. Take your vitamin D or vitamin C and take, and take your uh, calcium, also magnesium to balance it. And then retest your bones every two years to watch them get better. Instead of just trusting they're getting better, make sure they're getting better. Make sure your dose is proper so that we won't have another um, huge number of women in nursing homes who can't walk and who can't get around and can't take care of themselves. We want to all be independent and healthy. So please join me in that. We'll see you next week. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.